This episode of Sexplanations is sponsored by adamandeve.com, a sex toy store for all your sexual needs. They're online. You can go find them at adamandeve.com. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Dr. Lindsay Doe, clinical sexologist and host of this sex curious show, Sexplanations. I want to talk about all these fun sex and relationship words used by the polyamory community. First, polyamory. Polyamory is a big umbrella term for loving more than one person at a time or wanting to. You may hear it abbreviated as poly. She's Polly. I try to use Polly Am instead. I learned in this book, Love's Not Colorblind, some Polynesians use Polly as shorthand for their identity, and they've expressed frustration that it's also used for polyamory. I'm not opposed to sharing, but as the author Kevin puts it in his own decision to use Polly Am, finding a way to secure the use of Polly for the polyamorous community wasn't important. What was important was making sure that Polynesian people felt heard, their discomfort understood. Okay, that said, let's test your polyam vocab, specifically sex and relationship terms, starting with my favorite favorite, a comet. A comet is, quote, an occasional lover who passes through one's life semi-regularly, but without an expectation of continuity or a romantic relationship. An ambiguous sweetie, ambiguous sweetie, is someone with whom the relationship status is undefined or unclear, maybe intentionally. You may also call them a Schrodinger partner because you just don't know what they're doing in your box. A Taco Talk's partner or relationship is not so much ambiguous or unknown as it is difficult to describe. Taco Talk's too complicated to explain. Personally, I fantasize about and love being a hinge or a pivot. Someone who has two partners and I'm in the middle getting two times the attention because I believe in abundant love that it's possible to love more than one person at a time. Of course it is. A mother can love all her children. I can love all of my intimate network. An intimate network is one's romantic, sexual, and even platonic partners and their partners and their partners' partners. I actually like being the one to multi-link everybody. Multi-linking refers to creating the intimate connections between people. Again, romantic, aromantic, sexual, asexual, platonic, kinky, temporary, seasonal, long-term. Let's draw one. Dr. Doe's Panamory, mostly non-fictional. This is N, Libby's partner with whom she experiences limerence, longing, preoccupation, desire, and new relationship energy, or NRE. Just the two of them would be a dyad. He does identify as monogamous, intention to only be with one partner. Libby doesn't. She's body fluid monogamous, limiting wet sex and reproductive system germs to one person, but Libby also identifies as a switch, capable of being happy in either monogamous or non-monogamous relationships, like a BDSM switch, happy as a dom or a sub. Fortunately, N isn't a cowboy, a monogamous man who pairs with a polyam partner and then tries to rope them off away from other lovers. Nope. Not here. Libby has another intimate connection to Shell, her SO, significant other, or life partner, a friend with whom she has had a long-lasting, intertwined, and committed relationship. Libby gets ORE, old relationship energy from Shell. That's comfort, security, and stability. They've gone through multiple decades together. N and Libby and Shell together make a V. If Shell and N were also connected, it would be a triad, a delta, or a thruple. Or a troika if they were all married, but that's not the case in this story. Shell has a partner, their primary or MSO, most significant other. Some polyam folks use a hierarchy to describe the degree of intimacy and or commitment in their relationships. They may have primary partners, secondary partners, tertiary partners. Primary partners are often given power to veto secondary or tertiary relationships and or certain behaviors with those partners. Whereas polythrothism believes that one person or partner is not more important than anyone else. If Landon and Shell didn't rank one another, they might use the title nesting partners. This shows that they live together and make big life decisions together, but they aren't more important per se than anyone else. For now, Landon is Shell's primary and Libby's metamor, the partner of her partner. N and Landon are simply part of the same N, two couples joined by a partner from each pairing up with each other. Or they would be if there weren't more stars to configure. Libby has two Adonises, younger, very handsome lovers we'll call Cass and Locks. Maybe they're comets, they're certainly ambiguous sweeties. Then there are some free agents who present as single but practice polyamory, and polywogs, a younger generation raised by all these amazing grown-ups with a sense that love isn't finite and partnerships aren't always sexual. It's kitchen table polyamory, an intentional chosen family where partners, comets, free agents, and SOs can have a potluck together sharing food and love. Oh, what do you think? Are you experiencing wibble 
or frubble. Wibble is, quote, a feeling of insecurity, typically temporary or fleeting, when seeing a partner being affectionate with someone else. Maybe even imagining non-monogamous relationship dynamics create some wibble for you. For me, stories like this and my own experiences with polyam elicit frubble. Frubble, also known as compersion, is, quote, a pleasant emotion of happiness arising from seeing one's partner with another partner. A sense of gratitude that their lives are being enriched by additional people and relationships. You may not know how you feel about it yet. Your feelings may change. Your thoughts may change. Stay curious. These are toys from adamandeve.com. I'm not going to open them, but I want to show them to you. They're gorgeous. They all have similar purposes and looks, but are also different in their own ways. I like them all. So I asked Adam and Eve to share with me these three, which I will do an unboxing of to show you their differences and what I think of all of them. Special unboxing is going to happen later because they're going to do 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 do. And when you use the promo code DOE, D-O-E, my last name, you can get 50% off an eligible item plus free shipping on your whole order to the U.S. or Canada. I wish I could juggle right now. Maybe I'll learn to juggle for when I do open them and they could jump. 